What's up, y'all? Stud Doogie here with some Dead Space 2 for you. Uh, first, I want to say is if you have not played this game and you have even the remotest chance that you're going to play it, then stop watching this video. Don't watch any videos. Go play the game. And also make sure that you're playing it in a dark room with amazing surround sound, uh, theater system, or headphones. This is a uh, survival horror game that is best experienced firsthand. Don't let watching videos ruin the, this gaming experience for you. Okay, now let me get into it. So the first thing I want to address is the elephant in the room to my subscribers. Uh, who probably joined my channel because of the Borderlands 3 content I was putting up and are wondering why is this a Dead Space video instead of a Borderlands 3 video. Well, I'm taking a break from Borderlands for a couple of reasons. The first is it's still in flux. It's changing. So every major update basically completely changes the game and my content from the previous iteration becomes obsolete. And I'm not really a content creator, so I'm not really interested in just creating content for its content's sake in the case of Borderlands. Remember, I started that check my Borderlands stuff because people were saying Zane couldn't do Endgame and I wanted to showcase that he could. Uh, so it really wasn't about entertainment, it was more about information, but the information is being made obsolete with the updates. And that's fine, you know, the game should change and evolve. But I'm not going to be chasing my tail with this. I'm going to kind of wait until the uh, the game has settled down. It's kind of reached its final form. All the balancing and stuff is done. And then maybe I'll revisit making Borderlands 3 content. The second reason is that Borderlands 3 right now is really boring to me. With the last two updates, the Phase 1 and Phase 2 Mayhem modifications, they've basically may turn it into easy mode instead of leaving it a challenge. And that doesn't really interest me uh, insofar as making content. So those are the two reasons and uh, so I'm making some different stuff now primarily because people did subscribe and I feel like uh, you know I appreciate the fact that they did and maybe I should put something out you know since I'm not putting Borderlands 3 content I'll put something out so which is why I'm doing uh, Dead Space 2 because that's the game I'm currently playing so um, you know guys let me know what you think if it's not interesting to you guys then you know I just won't do it I'm still play the games that I play because gaming for me is not a job it's just for fun but I won't upload anything if there is no interest in it okay so let's talk about with Dead Space 2 Dead Space the Dead Space franchise um, is is one of my favorites and I say franchise knowing that there are three in it but when I came to it, there was just the original Dead Space, which I played on PlayStation 3, and that thing scared the shit out of me. Um, I did it home alone uh, at night with uh, my surround sound system, my big screen TV, and that game just like, man, it it that game had me on edge. And 2 is as good as that in terms of its ability to, you know, to be scary and and exciting and interesting but it's even on a bigger scale than the first though the story isn't uh i want to say it's not as good it's just different like, like isaac talks in this one and he doesn't talk in the first one so uh this is going to be a no damage run and uh i guess most of my commentary is going to be about if you wanted to kind of replicate the no damage run and what i'm doing how to set up for it for the engagement so you don't uh you don't take any damage now this beat coming up, I'll, you know, I'm assuming of course, because I just told you, if you haven't played it, go play it. So I'm assuming you guys know what happens in the story, so you know this guy's gonna fucking get it. And uh, I remember when I was first playing it, and that happened to him. I was like, oh man, dude, you just came and rescued me, and you just got murdered. And I felt bad for him. But as you know, he is a unitologist freaking nut job so you know when I got to that part in the story and realized who he was I was like fuck that guy you know he deserved to die because I despise the unitologist man it's like oh man it I religious zealots of any kind just not my kind of people so anyway uh, this first section here was just I died so many times so I kept on going right and when I first played it on PC I didn't realize that there were a quick action thing like right here coming up you're supposed to press E if you're not paying attention you see the E goes belong below your visible area I did 
didn't see it and I kept on dying and I was like what the f why am I dying I don't know what to do and then one time I got the glance that there's an E there so as soon as I go through that door I just start smashing E to make sure I can get out of here uh, this part you're just moving through just move through quickly uh, that's all there is to it and this was also kind of frustrating because all this stuff is happening and I didn't know how long it was going to take before I could engage and you know it, it was just a lot of tension and I, this game is just really well designed because if you're playing all this activity is happening your hands are tied you can't do anything other than run you're not sure where you're supposed to be running to you know it just just really well designed game uh, so this next beat here is one of those things where I'm saying uh, don't watch the game ahead of time. Now, I'm not going to show it, but this dude cuts his own throat. Think about that for a second. Like in the first, you know, six minutes of the, well, six, seven minutes of the game, you're seeing all this violence and then this dude, like, cuts his own throat. That's some, that's some messed up stuff. So we're about to start getting into the parts of the game where uh, we can interact with the environment ourselves but we're still limited you know so you still feel that tension of not being powerful and that you're just running away no from what I've done. <laughs> and this game is about 2011 and look at it it really looks good it has held up well in terms of graphics fidelity and stuff like that and the sound design in this game is just amazing so I will tell you there's one thing that bothers me if you if you look at your my outfit I'm just covered in blood and just gross and there's gonna come a point where I change my outfit and it feels like the clothes I put on is put over that so I'm still underneath my suit I'm in this this bloody grimy disgusting thing I just want to take a shower that's really all I want I just want to be clean and I have to spend the whole game being filthy 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 Alright, so, 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 again, you know, no, no big fights, no big anything, if you've been running in the direction uh, that you see in the video, you'll be fine, um, in that first section, just stay to the right, is really it, until you have to make that left turn, yeah, I see, I've played this game enough to feel comfortable that I could do a no damage run, but I haven't played it enough that I know every nook and cranny. So I still need the uh, the wayfinder or the way, the the directional thing um, to take me through certain areas because it's not fully memorized. And one of the things that makes okay okay this this beat right here is really cool. Look to the right side of the gate. You're gonna see a shadow. Of a monster. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. Like the first time I saw that shit, I was like, "Motherfucker, I don't have any bullets. I'm about to die." Okay, so here is a story beat that makes no sense to me. This is one of the the weak points in the story. Check this out. So you have all these monsters just running around killing things, and there's this one monster right here, and he decides to run away instead of turning around and killing me. Makes no sense to me at all. Now, the first time I was playing it, I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to die. And then he ran away. I was like, uh, that's weird. But I know why I did it, because, you know, you see that thing, you're like, you're trapped in this freaking um, duct, and you have no weapons, no nothing. You're screwed. But then it just runs away. So that was kind of anticlimactic. But, you know, it's a means to an end. You need to get through to get down here and get your, uh, or get our telekinesis abilities. So, um, when you're playing in zealot mode, you get less ammo. So normally, like, uh, the plasma cutter has six ammo. Whenever you pick one up in zealot, you only get three. So the telekinesis becomes, using telekinesis, especially in this early stage, is really important. So you want to make sure that you shoot for the body. Do not try to hit the limbs with the telekinesis. I mean, you can... But I wasn't good enough to be able to hit it all the time because there's a lag. It doesn't shoot as uh, fast as, let's say, your gun. Or the travel speed of the projectiles isn't as fast as your gun. So you can miss a target if it moves. Therefore, you're better off just sh making body shots with your telekinesis shots. And then you can clean up with your, uh, 
with your gun after the fact. But in these early stages, it's going to be primarily about telekinesis and ripping off body parts. Yeah, so there's going to be one behind us. So there's a total of three in this room. That's another thing you need to keep track of if you're doing a no damage run is to know how many enemies spawn. Now, where they spawn can vary in certain parts, but the number that spawns is is generally the same. So, you know, be aware that in this section there are going to be three enemies that spawn, one in front of you and two behind you. Uh, make sure you stomp, get as much ammo and much credits as possible. So uh, you can buy your ammo, you can buy your nodes, because you're not going to find especially ammo in the world as much. But, okay, let me rephrase that. All the ammo crates that you find in all the modes are exactly the same. The difference is the quantity that you get out of them. Right, so when I say you're not going to find as much, it means that, you know, like I said before, in Zealot mode and higher, you get half of what you would get in normal mode. Oh man, this dude right here, I real feel really sorry for him. But, you know, another elephant in the room I should point out is that I'm not doing this in real time. I have not able to do a no damage run and do commentary in real time. So, this is new for me. This means I'm actually putting in work. Because I'm, I've recorded the content. Now I have to uh, do commentary and then try to combine the two and da 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 da. So if y'all are not interested, let me the hell know so I don't waste my time doing this junk. Because I'd rather just play, to be totally honest. But like I said, you know, people have subscribed, and you know, I want to show my appreciation by making something for y'all. Now there's this there's this weird sort of irony about the first part of the game and the fact that it's so reliant on telekinesis because in order to improve your performance of your telekinesis you have to invest nodes into your rig but performance wise you're better off spending uh, those resources upgrading your weapons right so there's this weird thing where the thing you need the most in the early part of the game and the thing you depend on the most in the early part of the game because there's so uh, you know the ammo is, is restricted is your telekinesis but the thing you're spending your resources on are upgrading um, your weapons or at least that's what I did so that's what's been effective for me maybe you'll go in a different route a different direction and um, and spend your money on your rig so you can upgrade your telekinesis ability to do more damage. See, that was supposed to be a arm shot, but I'm playing like a scrub right now. See, it would take more than one shot to kill that guy with a telekinesis. If it was upgraded, I could probably get him in one shot, but at this stage, you can't upgrade anything anyway, so it is what it is. So, again, you see, I'm, I'm aiming for body shots, center mass, or at least the belly button. Is how I go at it. Now you will do more damage if you can hit the joints, but they move weirdly, and there's travel time with telekinesis, so I just keep it simple and body shot. What I love about this game is that it's not that every single uh, room you go into, you're going to get into a fight. But the game sets itself up to make you feel like every room you go into, there's potentially a fight. And sometimes there are these just long extended periods where there is no enemy engagement. And so then you're just kind of freaked out when there finally is. So part of uh, being able to do this is playing it enough that you're comfortable, you don't fall for the tricks of the game because there will be sound cues that makes you think something is happening but there's nothing happening and that just keeps the tension going which is just one of the genius things about this game it's just so well done in that regard because it just keeps the tension always 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 all right so we got a big fight coming up here so you're going to see a, a, something hilarious it's, it's funny to me so you see me clearing out uh these things that would get picked up by telekinesis in the fight because i don't want to accidentally pick them up while I'm fighting, so I'm clearing them out. Now watch what actually happens. So I'm clearing all this crap out, so we have clear line of sight. I won't accidentally pick anything up. And here comes the fight. 
and he brings the freaking um, cheer right back in here. <laughs> clear these guys up. I think it's like four of them. So that's two down. That's three. He's not dead. That's three. I guess it's five. Like I'm trying to get the, the guy on the floor but the dude steps up in front of him. I see what I did there. I baited him out so he comes from around the uh, that object in the middle. Yeah, so once you get to five, you're done. You're gonna get that first node. It's right there. Okay, you're right. Go through, just hit everything, get my stuff. That's just a tick. I like having the plasma cutter in the first slot. It doesn't really matter because I only ever run with two weapons at a time anyway. So, you know, I use my, my weapon swapping for on my mouse wheel so it doesn't matter because all it takes is just one one tick in any direction and I'm going to be at the next weapon anyway. But it's just a, a thing I, I do. Uh, the reason I'm playing the uh, the log is because that was one of the ones that I hadn't heard before. So I'm not going to be stopping and playing logs and uh, reading the text chats. Uh, you know, that's more for like a full playthrough type video. This is more about the no damage bits. But I will be getting all the schematics and all of the, um, uh, the circuit boards and the nodes so that I can power up my gear sooner rather than later. Uh, I kept on dying in this room you know, before I even got to the point where I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a no damage run when I was just playing it just normally. Because I thought that he would stay in, uh, in stasis and I didn't have to shoot him. And no matter what happened, he always got to me faster than I could shoot him. So I, I literally had to use stasis to get him. And he's a one shot, one hit kill. Once he touches you, you're, you're done. There are two enemies that I really despise in this game. Those guys. And uh, the ones that like to peek around corners. They're, they're much later in the game. I think at chapter 5 or something. If I remember correctly. And the interesting thing about these uh, these guys is that they spit at you but they have two different they have a projectile spit and they have like a liquid spit you can catch this projectile spit with telekinesis and throw it back at them but you can't do anything about the liquid and it seems to be based on proximity whether they do the liquid spit and the projectile spit so sometimes um, it's just easier to kill them than to take a guess on whether you're going to do a projectile spit or the uh, the non projectile spit what the fuck? Right, here's another Terrifying story beat. Yeah, that's just unsettling. The first time I played it, it was just unsettling, is really what it was. Even sometimes when it wasn't just out and out scary, it was just unsettling to, uh, to deal with. So there are a total of like two nodes in the hospital section before we get down to where the save point is so um, we got a second one this whole decompression thing we're going to utilize it as a tool in later parts of the game so we're going to use it as a way to save ammo Alright, so this is, we're coming close to the end here. So once we kill this guy and save, that's going to be the end of chapter one. Like I said, if there is zero interest in this, um, you know, I'm not going to waste your time or mine uh, with any more. But if you, you know, if you're a subscriber and you want to see chapter two and the rest of it, let me know and I'll keep doing it. Otherwise, you know, good luck, have fun in whatever you're playing, and I will, uh, you know, catch you guys in the next Borderlands 3 video whenever 
that is. So get ready for the end here. Oh, this is the part I was telling you about where, you know, I put on my suit and that dirty clothes that I have on, it's just, it feels like it's, I have it on still. It's just underneath my freaking suit. Like, why couldn't I just get a shower and some fresh, clean clothes, some fresh undies as I wear my suit, you know? That's just how I roll. I like to be fresh and dope. Yeah, baby. Like a freaking boss. I wear the police suit because it has the most slots for gear, and that allows me to pick up not have to leave everything behind so I can sell a bunch of stuff and get a bunch of credits and um, you know buy nodes and buy ammo etc 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 wait this is not the end it is is it the end crap I thought it was the end no no I still have to do the boss fight sorry um, the boss fight is a lot easier if you pick up one of the the, uh, the powerful weapons. So I've, I got the javelin. The javelin is probably the best gun in the game. Well, one of the best guns in the game, at least, for these mob clearing sections. Um, I'm, that's the, the my what I'm going to main through much of this content. Is going to be the javelin until we get to chapter 14, and I'm going to switch over to something else. But the javelin's a monster, and it's a monster because it serves. It does two things. Not only is single target damage high, but it also is good for crowd control. Just shoot him in the joints. There you go, two shots, he's done. Alright. Just keep it moving. Put yourself, put something between you and him. Or it, I don't know what the gender is, so we'll just call it an it. I don't know if gender even matters for these things. Um, now, if you get close to him, he will harm you, but if you if you use telekinesis to pick the things he drops up, he'll do that death animation. Otherwise, if you get close to him and try to pick it up up close, he would do the death animation and do damage to you. So, which is why I did it that way. How long have I been here? Three years. Tideman found you floating in space near Aegis 7 and brought you here to study. Why can't I remember anything? The marker you found imprinted your brain with self-replicating signal. The longer you're awake, the more the signal spreads. It's killing you, Isaac. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Let's pick up some uh, some credits on the floor, and we're gonna get to the first bench. But we're gonna do our first set of upgrades in chapter two. And what we're gonna see happen here is gonna just gonna run ahead and um, and get to the safe station and bring it into chapter one and then chapter two we'll start out with our first set of upgrades I just picked it up as a force of habit because I'm not going to do anything with any of it that's your ass that his arm should have fallen off I got chipped on that one. Alright, so we're coming close to the end of chapter uh, one for reals this time. Once again, if this is not your jam, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Laters.